What's up guys, Easy Philosophy, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at muscle memory. Now what exactly is muscle memory? Muscle memory is the ability to reproduce a particular movement without conscious thought, acquired as a result of frequent repetition of that movement. Now, the basal ganglia in our brain is in charge of motor skills, control, and learning. This is where all the muscle memory is stored. The basal ganglia controls muscle memory. Now, the first example is eating. When we eat, we don't shove the spoon up our nose and we don't accidentally miss and poke our eye out with the spoon. We consistently place the spoon in our mouths. Why? Muscle memory. We can eat with our eyes closed we can eat standing on one leg. We've eaten so much that all of these tasks are easy. Now we have done the motion of eating so much in our lives that we have developed a strong muscle memory. Now toddlers are messy eaters. This is because toddlers have not fed themselves enough to have developed a strong muscle memory. This is why their face is all smudged with food. Now the next example is accents. Second language speakers usually have accents for that language. For example, let's say we have a native French speaker. Now this native French speaker learns English, his second language. Now the way he pronounces certain words in English might sound a bit French. This is what a French accent is. Why is this? Because of muscle memory. The muscles in his mouth had developed a strong muscle memory to make the sounds needed to pronounce French. The next example is learning how to ride a bike. Now most of us have learned how to ride a bike at some point in our lives. When we were first learning, we kept falling and we had to get back up and with practice we slowly mastered the balance needed to ride a bike. Now some of us have taken long breaks from riding bikes and when we come back we still know how to ride a bike. Why is this? Because of the muscle memory. Your muscles remember how to ride a bike. The next example is piano or any instrument. The more you practice, the better you will get at playing a piece. Why is this? Because the repetition improves your muscle memory. As you play it more and more, your muscles remember where to go on the keyboard and in which order. This allows you to progressively become faster and play more smoothly with fewer mistakes. The next example is cooking. Now, Gordon Ramsay once carved the chicken blindfolded. How come he can do it while I can't? For starters, this comes down to muscle memory again. Gordon Ramsay has probably carved thousands of chickens in his cooking career. He's earned 17 Michelin stars and his muscles just know what to do. The next example, sports, or in this case, hockey. Now the NHL player on the left has probably shot well over a million pucks in his career. His body has done the same repeating movement of shooting a puck so many times that he can shoot a puck perfectly wherever he wants. Now the NHL goalie on the right has probably saved thousands of pucks on his blocker. Paired with his impressive hand-eye coordination, the goalie knows exactly what to do to make a great save. The goalie can predict where the shot will be and make the save and will turn his blocker 90 degrees to the left to make the puck turn direction. This is muscle memory. The next example is basketball. I've always found it so impressive how a basketball player can pick any spot on the court and he can shoot to score a point. This is all muscle memory. Now here we have the brain's influence on muscle memory. We learned about the basal ganglia and how it's in charge of motor skills, control, and learning. And this is where all the muscle memory is stored. This part of the brain controls the muscle memory. Now the prefrontal cortex regulates thoughts and emotions. This allows us humans to have a sense of time. For example, past, present, or future. Now, when we start to think or become emotional, our muscle memory slows down. For example, nervousness will negatively impact our muscle memory. Here's an example. Let's say a hockey goalie 
has practiced the same glove shot over and over again, and every time he could make a glove save. This is because the constant practice allowed him to develop a strong muscle memory towards making that glove save. Now once he was put on camera, he couldn't make a single glove save. Why is this? Because the goalie started overthinking because the camera was there. The goalie was trying to be perfect. He was worrying about his positioning, about his block positioning, about his stick positioning. He was overthinking about meaningless things because when he was practicing, all of his positioning was perfect. The goalie's prefrontal cortex got control of him and slowed down his muscle memory. We all know that saying that time flies when you're having fun. Either you're watching your favorite Netflix TV show or you're at the mall with your friends. In a blink of an eye, five hours have already passed. This same phenomenon happens when you're focused, when you're really focused. Let's say you have an upcoming final exam. When you study really hard, you don't even realize that time has flew by. This is because you've successfully turned off your prefrontal cortex. Therefore, your sense of time was no longer there. Now here we have how to turn off the prefrontal cortex. The first tip is breathe. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathing helps slow down the heart and deliver oxygen to the brain. Breathing is really important, especially if you're nervous. The second tip is posture. Fix your posture. Have a good posture. Having a good posture promotes confidence. Lastly, we have positive inner self-talk. Say a performance statement to yourself. A performance statement can be, stay focused, I can do this, I'm the best, stay calm, depending on what you need. Repeating a performance statement to yourself promotes confidence. You can even Superman pose, which boosts your confidence even more. Doing all these things successfully turns off your prefrontal cortex and allows your muscle memory to gain control. Now to wrap things up, even though it might not seem like it, our muscle memory exists and plays a huge role in our lives. If we want to get really really good at something, we need a strong muscle memory which is developed through training, dedication and practice. Now developing a strong muscle memory takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes months, even years of hard work, dedication, and practice. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next episode.